Welcome to Kill Test. That sucks. This is bad. The Jian. The Jian sword first appeared in China all the way back in the 7th century BC. Wisely designed, the sharp lethal tip was ideal for rapid cuts and stabs, while the wide body aided in deflecting attacks. Considered an elite weapon due to the amount of training needed to master the sword, the straight double-edged blade was built for subtle instant strikes, requiring a level of precision and finesse that only comes from a true swordsman. Because it was so difficult to master, the Jian was removed in mass from the battlefield. However, many are still involved in ceremonies and featured in films, including Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. All right, Bladesmiths, welcome to Kill Test. Now, your Jian swords look beautiful, but are they deadly? Well, to find that out, I will take your weapon and do some slashes and thrust on this ballistic dummy. Vince, you're up first. You ready? Yeah, for hell. All right, Vince, let's talk about your Jian sword up here. Overall, I like the aesthetics of this sword. Now, your handle construction is within scale of this blade. It's comfortable when I wrap around it. Now, your edge is razor sharp. In thrusting, it cuts out, and when you swing, you can feel the impact of this sword. Overall, sir, it will kill. Wanted to hear that. Good job. Hey, Casey, you got the stomach for this? You're next. I'm ready. All right, Casey, let's talk about your Gian sword here. First off, I like the lines that you have with your sword here and the Damascus pattern. I can appreciate that. And now, in cutting. It was so much fun just to be able to slice over and over and over with ease with a blade that moves. This, sir, will kill. Thank you. Bladesmiths, welcome to the strength test. Now, to test the edge holding ability of your blades and the overall strength and construction, I'm going to take each of your swords and smash them repeatedly into these heavy pots. Now, I'm not really concerned what your blades do to the pots, even though it's going to look really cool and be a lot of fun. I want to see what the pots are going to do to your blades and edges. Vince, you're up first. You ready to go? Yes, sir. Oh, Vince, I gotta tell you, it's a great blade. I mean, where I was striking is still sharp, still straight and true, but the problem is doing your pommel, your threads here didn't go very far through, so pommel broke loose. Bit of a problem. Vince, your blade has suffered a catastrophic failure after three shots on the pots. A pummel is critical to a one-handed weapon's retention, but that doesn't mean that this competition is over. Casey, these are some pretty strong terracotta pots, and you'll have to survive three pot shots to make it out of here. I feel ready. All right, Jay, you ready? If the pots can knock off the pommel, they could do anything. It all comes down to this. I've got a little bit of knots in my stomach. We'll see what happens. Casey, congratulations, your blade survived. Vince, 
Unfortunately, you cannot continue testing. Please exit the forge. I'm disappointed. I think I made a hell of a blade. It was still sharp after the three terracottas, but the blade needs to be 100%. Mine was 98%. And he failed. Casey, congratulations. You are the Forge and Fire champion, and that's the title that comes with a check for 10,000 big ones, buddy. Congratulations. Thank you. The deed is done, and I won. Great steal and a great job on the handle, too. I've proven to myself that I can make a damn good blade. For me, that's nothing better. The Sword of Gujian. The Sword of Gujian is an exquisitely crafted Jian sword wielded by King Gujian, ruler of China's Kingdom of Yu. After brutal battles between the Yu and the Wu, King Gujian was forced into slavery in exchange for sparing his people. After three years of servitude, King Gujian rebuilt his empire, conquered the dwindling Kingdom of Wu, and was bestowed this sword. Featuring a sharp lethal tip, intricate blue crystal, and turquoise guard, the sword was just as ornate as it was deadly. More than 2,500 years later, the sword was discovered by archeologists in a remarkable condition. Still, with a razor sharp edge, it has been called one of the most intact artifacts ever found. Bladesmiths, welcome to the kill test. To find out what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do according to its historic design. I will take your weapon, deliver some killing thrusts and blows on this ballistic dummy. Horace, are you up for this? Yes, sir. Let's do this. All right, Forrest, let's talk about your weapon here. And it's very forward heavy. What makes it hard to handle is the fact that you have a very skinny handle right here. A lot of these movements, your blade, when upon contact, was spinning in my hand. I had to adjust several times to make sure that I stay on the edge over here. Now, the edge is sharp. Once it makes contact and you slash, it digs deep. Overall, sir, you will kill. All right, Caleb, you're up. You ready? I see it. All right, Caleb, first up, the blade in itself, balance-wise, I think you nailed it. Now, your handle construction, it's ovoid, it's actively comfortable because of the balance and a very sharp edge. All the cuts are very, very deep. Overall, sir, you don't keel. Bladesmiths, welcome to the strength test, a gong chop. Test the strength and durability of your edges as well as the overall construction of your swords of Gujian. I'm gonna be chopping them into these gongs. Horace, you're up first, you ready? Yes, sir. Well, Forrest, your sword did take some damage on the edge. There's some rolls sort of crushed in right here. Your handle is really small. A bigger handle would have helped me control this really well. But all that being said, that much damage in a big strength test like this, well done. Thank you. All right, Caleb, you're up. You ready? Heck yeah, man.
Well, Caleb, he did a great job with the Damascus. I love to see this kind of stuff. It's beautiful. Your blade is still straight true, and the weight on this is, is phenomenal. There is one big issue, though. Your handle. It's loose now. Your handle is coming apart. I can move it. And their pommel is, is also loose. If these were right and tight and held in place, then it tends to help everything else stay where it is. But just a little bit of play in this guard can send shockwaves right down the handle. But uh, got to say, that's one heck of a blade. Thank it's you. Just, Thank you. you know, this handle that's really causing the issue now. Yes, sir. So What's we've got on? a pretty mobile opening that has a corresponding split on the back side of the handle. Not only is it loose, but the material that's loose has sharp edges. OK. Yeah. I mean, this would require either taping that up or wearing a glove. And now we're not mm -hmm. testing the same as the other one. OK. Ben? That's a gorgeous sword. I think the handle's gone. Uh, Dave? I don't kills me. Uh, yeah. Can't. Doug? I agree. Mm -hmm. Now, we've continued with blades that had loose parts before. We've continued with blades that had split handles before. Your handle has cracked. However, the combination of the two things has made your blade unsafe to continue with any testing. And therefore, you cannot be our Forged and Fire champion. I'd like to invite you to shake our hands, shake your competitor's hand, and then I have to ask you to please leave the forge. I may not be the forge and fire champion, but man, I'm walking out of here with my head held high, and I'm proud. Forrest, congratulations. You are the forge and fire champion, and that is a title that comes with a check for $10,000, my friend. Good job. I'm on forward. I'm thrilled that I'm the champion. It hasn't even soaked in yet, and next day or two, I'll really realize what's happened. Being a Forge and Fire champion means that I succeeded in the goal that I wanted to reach. This is for everyone at home, and I'm coming home a Forge and Fire champion. Yeehaw! The Jumanji Yari. Originating in the 1500s, the Jumanji Yari was carried by Japanese soldiers known as the Ashigaru. These peasant foot soldiers relied on the long shafted spear for its reach and versatility in combat. Using the weapon's double edged crossbars to disarm and pull mounted samurai from their horses, the Ashigaru could then employ the razor sharp <laughs> central blade to fatally skewer the fallen enemy, and all from a comfortable distance. Today, video game enthusiasts can unleash the Jumanji Yari's devastating capabilities in the game Shadow Fight 2. The Yari, with its long handle and multi-pronged spear, makes it a trifecta of points and edges in a deadly weapon. To see what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, I will take your Yari and deliver multiple slash and thrust on this big carcass. Quad, you're up first. You ready? Oh, I'm ready. <sighs> oh. Jesus. <sighs> All right, Fuad, let's talk about your Yari here. We felt that it had very good balance to it, that on the initial slash right here, it dug in into flesh, then it hit the spine. The transference of energy hit a weak spot into your handle over here, but it still had a secondary cut all the way through. I would consider your blade a kill. Thank you. It was, mine, mine was beautiful, well-made, and some wood grain, just, you know? Fuad, your weapon suffered a catastrophic failure. Now, that's bad. However, you're not out of this competition yet. Jacob, your Yari still must perform in this kill test. Let's see what happens. Right now, I'm feeling nauseous. <laughs> my heart's pounding in my chest, my hands are sweaty, and I'm just can't wait to see how it actually goes down.
All right, Jacob, let's talk about your Yari. In the initial swing, instead of being able to cut cleanly with this part to cut through, this got in the way with the angle that it had. But let's talk about these particular blades. They are sharp enough to penetrate into the pig carcass. The thrust is really devastating and very deep into that. Your handle construction, it stayed true. No issues at all. Overall, your weapon will kill. Thank you, sir. My Yari held up, and I'm just, thank you, God. <laughs> well, Fuad, the blades of your Yari were beautifully constructed. The overall weapon was very elegant. However, your shaft broke in our first test, and we cannot move forward in this competition because that is a catastrophic weapon failure. And I have to ask you to please leave the forge. I was really confident going into the competition, and I felt like my Yari was going to really perform a lot better than Jacob's. And it's just pure irony all the way down. Jacob, you are the Forged and Fire champion and will be receiving a check for $10,000. Good job. How do you feel right now? I feel amazing. I came here to prove that I can actually come out here at 19 and compete with serious knife makers. Thank you, sir. Really, I would have liked to beat Fuad in a different way, but I'm the Forged and Fire champion at $10,000. <laughs> it's awesome. the Spanish Navaja. Rising to popularity in the 1600s, the Spanish Navaja was a deadly folding weapon, common in duels and street brawls. This blade could be folded into the handle and locked in place, making it easy to conceal. It featured a locking ratchet mechanism, which kept the blade in place. The ratchet sound of a Navaja opening was also used to intimidate foes. Wielded with the blade up, a strike from the Navaja was difficult to parry, and wounds were often fatal. Navajas were often inscribed with pithy phrases in Spanish, boasting about the deadliness of the blade. The Spanish Navaja, an iconic folding weapon from history. It's even said to influence the American Bowie knife. To see what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, we'll take your Spanish Navaja, then deliver killing blows on this deer carcass. Matthew, you're up first. You ready? Oh, yeah. Okay, Matthew, nice and solid work right here, but I'm still recovering from an injury. So please welcome Anthony Palmer. Anthony is one of the chief instructors of Merkaida Kali. Today, he will have the pleasure of wielding your Spanish Navaja. My biggest concern going into testing is the sharpness of my blade. Your blade is beautiful, and it's also solid in its feel. It lacerates easily. You can see it chopped right through the spine. Now, one of the pieces here came flying out during the test. But in terms of the sharpness and the wieldability of your blade, it will kill. Oh, yeah. OK, Wade, it's your turn. You ready? You bet. Please wait, I can hear the mechanism working in there. The thud of that deer carcass hitting the floor is absolutely the sound of $10,000. I feel like I'm ahead. That's where I want to be. I want to win it. All right, Wade, your blade is sharp. Thank you. The one issue is it's kind of rickety here, even while it was being wielded. But despite being rickety, it's deadly, and it will kill. Thank you. Next up is a strength test. Ben? To test the strength and durability of your edge, as well as the overall construction, I'm going to smash into this bamboo with your Spanish Navajas. Matthew, you're up first. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. Well, Matthew, 
This thing's one hell of a chopper. Held together beautifully. There was slight glinting that happened up here near the tip, but it's pretty darn sharp. Very well done. Thank you. Wade, you're up next. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> I'm ahead, he's ahead, I'm ahead, he's ahead. We've been this way the whole time. It's a battle. I want to win it. the third strike, things started to get kind of loose, and that torquing and the stress made your scales pop off. The only thing holding the cutting end to the handle end are these thin brass sheets, and I don't have confidence in their strength. This blade has lost its structural integrity. It's no longer safe to test. Wade, due to the catastrophic failure of the structural integrity of your weapon, we cannot continue testing that blade. So. I have to ask you to please leave the forge. I thought I could beat down a door with that thing, but, you know, apparently you can't. Matthew, congratulations. You are the Forge and Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a check for 10 grand. Good job. Uh, I just won Forge and Fire, and I am so excited. <laughs> Being here as a winner means a lot to me. I've had so much support throughout my life to do what I am passionate about, and my passion has proven to be what I should be doing. I'm supposed to be a metal worker. Stay with it. Don't stop. Keep going. That is a Maasai lion spear. The Maasai lion spear gets its name from an East African tribe of fearsome warrior nomads that date their origins back to the 15th century. Traditionally used to hunt lions, the weapon features a double-edged blade at one end and a fearsome spike at the other. This allows a Maasai warrior to engage his opponent in close quarters or at a distance. While today lion hunts have been replaced, the deadly spear lives on in popular culture and can even be spotted in the film Laura Croft, Tomb Raider, The Cradle of Life. To see how lethal your weapon is, I will take your spear and deliver lethal blows on this big carcass. Matthew, you're up first. Are you ready? Ready as I'll ever be. Let's do this. What I'm most worried about is lateral force on this spear, because it's a very thin, sleek spear. Well, that sucks. <laughs> Matt, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. This is bad. Your weapon has suffered a catastrophic failure and cannot continue with testing. However, John, we can't just declare you the Forged and Fire champion. Your blade has to hold up for at least a stab and a slash on this carcass. Doug? I don't know what to say. I don't know what to think. I I've never been more, you know, nervous in my life. Uh, I'm hoping and praying that he doesn't break in the same spot. Bladesmiths, as they're designed, these tests push your weapons to the limit. John, your blade survived the two cuts on our carcass. Matt, that means, unfortunately, your blade did not make the cut. And I have to ask you to please leave the forge. Congrats, man. I'm happy for you. I'm disappointed. 
Given what I know now, I would have gone back and really tried chopping some things very hard with the spear and hopefully broken the handle myself. I'm really happy for John. Maybe I'm not happy to lose to John, but I'm glad John won. John, congratulations. You built a weapon that held up in our test that makes you our new Forged and Fire champion who also receives a check for 10 grand. How do you feel right now? Uh, I feel like a million bucks, but I guess 10 grand will do. <laughs> All right, well, come on over here and shake our hands. Good job, bud. Thank Very you. Very good. I want to have to uh, talk to my wife about what I'm allowed to, to do with this prize money. I know one thing, my baby girl's going to get in a little new wardrobe.